Music plays a very important role in the creation of any video game. It helps set the tone of the game, make the overall experience more satisfying and fun, and most importantly, it gives the game its identity. And there are a lot of very good examples of iconic gaming soundtracks in the industry. Kevin Ripple with his iconic Gears of War soundtrack, which makes you feel like a true patriot fighting to save humanity. Sakuraba Motoi and his awesome and epic Dark Souls soundtrack, big scale battles against the giant monsters, combined with Sakuraba-san's music, make these epic battles a true awesome and visual experience. Mario Donnell with his iconic Halo soundtrack, which encaptivates the mystery and epicness that is exploring the Halo universe for the first time. Mick Gordon with his overly aggressive Doom soundtrack, which combined with Doom's fast pace and super aggressive gameplay, greatly enhances the experience that is killing demons from hell with big effing guns and a lot of violence. There's no denying that Mick Gordon's soundtrack harmonizes perfectly with the universe of Doom. It empowers the player, it makes the player feel powerful like the Doom Slayer, and even gives players the inspiration to start working out and get shredded and badass like the Doom Slayer. My point is that Mick Gordon was able to translate Doom's incredibly violent and over-the-top gameplay into a big mix of different sounds that we call music. He was able to create this very beloved soundtrack, one that has already made a mark in the gaming industry as one of the best gaming soundtracks of all time. So you would think, because of how much the fanbase love Gordon's work, and how overwhelmingly positive the reception has been, that Gordon will keep working on creating more music for the franchise of Doom. And right there, my brother, is where you are wrong. If you enjoyed the video, sorry but do it, consider subscribing and leave a like. Enjoy the video. I'm very close to Gordon's music, as it is basically my favorite genre to hear. Heavy metal. Music I hear religiously would be Elena Sigmund's Zombies soundtrack, Abracadabra being my absolute favorite track, Evanescence, Epica, System of a Down, Linkin Park, Breaking Benjamin, and of course, Doom soundtrack. This video is a follow-up of my last video called The Tragedy of Doom Eternal's soundtrack. If you still do not know what has transpired in the last two weeks or so, I'm gonna give a quick recap. Mick Gordon, the composer for Doom 2016 soundtrack and Doom Eternal soundtrack, was not given enough time and freedom to completely mix the soundtrack for Doom Eternal. Instead of giving Mick time and the other audio engineers to finish the work, Bethesda prohibited Mick to work on the mixing, and decided to handle the mixing themselves, thus rushing the game's soundtrack release and nosediving the overall quality the soundtrack was supposed to get. There was no reason for the soundtrack to be rushed in the first place, the game was already out anyway. Doom 2016 soundtrack came out 4 months after the game's release, and Eternal soundtrack came out not even a month after the game was released. The collector's edition for Doom Eternal came with the original soundtrack for the game in a cassette, so Bethesda could make an argument that they rushed the soundtrack to deliver the missing item of the collector's edition. But we all know that if Gordon came out and asked the community to wait just a few months for him to finish the work, everyone and and their mother would have waited patiently. The Doom community is very supportive, wholesome, and overall pretty awesome. I've experienced that personally, so there was no excuse for the soundtrack to be rushed. No reason at all. After that video was done, our Lord and Savior Hi Dudu 2 posted on YouTube that Mick Gordon was actually going to mix the remaining 40 plus songs he didn't mix for the soundtrack, and that we were going to actually get a Mick Gordon cut for the game's soundtrack. I actually got really excited for that. The tracks that were mixed by Gordon are the following. Cultist Base, Cultist Prayer, The Icon of Sin, Welcome Home, Great Slayer, The Only Thing They Fear Is You, Prayer of the Diminished, Command and Control, Midhook, The Betrayer, and Doom Eternal. The songs that Mick didn't get to mix are still phenomenal and 
awesome, but you can actually tell which songs were mixed by Mick Gordon and which ones were rushed to meet the deadline. Ah, <sighs> deadlines. My true arch enemy. Just listen to this song called Command and Control that Gordon mixed. It's really heavy, the sounds get inside your head and make it vibrate, it's really satisfying to hear, it is very clean, the sounds are clean, very clean. Compare that to a song that wasn't mixed by Mick, like this one, and you will see a tremendous difference on the sounds. It turns out that Will got blue balled by Bethesda and Gordon more than anybody else. It was confirmed by Gordon himself that he was going to get them up eventually and that everything was sorted out already. But in the end, Bethesda decided to back out and betray Mick Gordon and the Doom community. It was confirmed by Gordon on Instagram that Bethesda wrapped the soundtrack up and that legally, Gordon is not able to modify the soundtrack at all, and that really sucks balls. Hiding behind a legal paper is just... Ugh, asco. It was basically the worst case scenario for everyone, especially for Mick Gordon. He cannot modify the files, open them, touch them, not even breathe on them, you know? Just imagine yourself working incredibly hard on a passion project. You pour your heart, blood, tears and soul into this, sacrificing countless hours, losing yourself to live up to the expectation of the community, just so that at the very end, someone strips your project from you when it's 90% done, prohibits you from touching it any longer and that same someone proceeds to peace on it and ship it out. Countless of hours sacrificed just so at the end someone who knows nothing about content creation destroys your hard work. If that happened to me, which it did on college, I would be furious. Basically hell on earth because of how furious I am. And this makes me very sad because you can see how much passion Gordon had for this project. He even came to Austin to record a heavy metal choir. Car and Took has basically become an iconic chant in the franchise. He once again began hiding little easter eggs on Eternal soundtrack just for fun, like Doom 2's cover, a Doom keycard, and much, much more. And it really makes me sad to see that Mick Gordon will not be working with the franchise of Doom because of these business decisions. I have nothing but respect to Mick Gordon. I listen to his work every day when I'm on my car, in the gym, or just casually on my room. Even with my friends, when we are playing like Call of Duty, Halo or whatever on Discord, we hop into the music bot and began playing Mick Gordon's work like Doom. His work is just phenomenal. I love it. I highly respect his work and him as a person. And he's the kind of pal I love to have a beer and a conversation with. So Mick, if you ever want to hop into the channel and have a conversation with fans, you are more than welcomed, brother. You really are. Current Took Brothers. I wish you the best, Mick. Current Took Brothers. Car and Took. So okay Spartans, that's all the time I had for today's video. If we see any updates on this topic, I'll make sure to let you all know, as this is something I have a lot of passion on. Thanks to all of my patrons who made this video possible, and links to all of my social accounts will be down below. Be sure to follow me on Twitch, Twitter, and on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Adios. Bye.